this next one's about me with a sore tail. It's a bit stressing to say. This morning he had no one else to talk to except the station cats. They were playing hide and seek. When Henry saw his driver chatting with a passenger he hadn't seen before, he was a vet. What's a vet? asked Henry. Well, a person that helps sick or hurt animals, not humans, said the driver. That's Dr. Burns. He's just started working at the hospital. But he'll be a regular passenger of ours from now on. Henry soon became friends with Dr. Burns and looked out for him every day. He liked him. He always said hello to him. And he always, Henry, always gave him a friendly toot toot back. And that's how they meet. And one morning, Dr. Bones wasn't there. Henry was worried. Have you seen Dr. Burns? The driver asked the guard. Not today, said the guard. I'll ask the ticket collector. Have you seen Dr. Burns? The guard asked. Not since yesterday, said the ticket collector. They already asked Postman Pat, and he told them he hadn't seen him. It was getting late, and one of the signals went up, telling Henry it was time to go. Henry made a turn round before pulling his chain, departing without Dr. Bones. He was upset. I've lost my nice doctor, he wailed. Don't fret, Henry, said his driver, comfortingly. He's just probably having a day off or something. Doctors have holidays too, you know. But Henry wasn't happy. To make matters worse, it was a stormy day. And the rain lashed at the carriage windows and thundered down on the roof of the cab. He had to go carefully along the line. He never liked the rain.
at the next station, Henry had to stop for a long time. The driver looked out of the cab to see what the delay was. We've been waiting for far too long, he said. There must be something wrong. That's all we need, thought Henry. Hmm, perhaps there's a fern on the line, suggested the fireman. He got down from the footplate and went to see the station master. Soon the station master came to see Henry's driver. He looked worried. We need your help, driver, he said. Twilight Sparkle, one of the little ponies, got her tail broken from a fallen branch. Apple Brom passed by mistake. Henry's driver looked concerned. We should call an ambulance. Straight away. I don't think it can get here at this rate. We need another way to transport her. Henry's driver thought for a moment. Then a smile spit across his face. I know. He said, I've got a much better idea. What is it then? asked the station master. Henry can take Twilight to the hospital vet. It's in Snoping Moon Docks. Ah, that is a good idea, said the station master. And he phoned the other station master, but a quick plan. Henry was delighted to help, and was very honoured to have been chosen for the special duty. If only Dr. Burns was here to see me being an ambulance tool, he thought excitedly. He went to Forest Hill. The prisoners helped Twilight out of the heavy branch. Her tail was in a terrible state. Oh, my tail hurts. I can't move it. I'm sorry I didn't mean to jerk it, Twilight. That's all right, Apple Paul. I'm glad you'll ask the station master to stop hitting this train. Oh, here it comes, this train. I was just getting my empty bucket ready for another batch of apples when Apple Brom mistakenly crossed some rotten branch. It was so heavy that it crunched my tail bone. There's just one thing to my night. Uh, you can't walk when it's broken your tailbone. In other words, you can't drag it like this. Oh, well, I'll let you hold it gently. Twilight was on board and Henry's set off taking care of not bumping her about.
goodness, cool took her in. Then went home once they dealt him with her tail bone. She stayed in the hospital for some time, then went home and it was married, but she still needed it for the cover. My doctor troubled me to rest it. Till it's better, Henry. Oh, I don't like this. It's the only way left. That way, the bones can recover. Henry speaks so you no twilight, said Dr. Burns. It's like when anyone has to stay in hospital to get better. Twilight knew they were right. And she went to bed. Poor girl, thought Henry. I'll have to visit her. Thought Henry she left. The next morning, Henry visited Twilight's cottage. Can I talk with you? Oh, hello, Henry. I suppose you might. I was the same as you, only I was different. Your tail will get better, the same, but I was better. The same when I had a small firebox. I had a sick feeling. Boy, was I not well. I didn't know you were that sick, Henry. Captain Cox, I'll tell you my story. That's right, I not. I know how Sinister told you and your friend's his book. Hello, sir. Are you telling me your story? Yes, I am. Magic of you, please. Okay. Cole. One fine morning, Henry was feeling very sorry for himself. He said to James, You know, James, I suffer dreadfully and no one cares. James said, Rubbish, Henry. You don't work hard enough. Henry was bigger than James, but sometimes a uh, bit smaller than Gordon. Sometimes he could pull chains. Sometimes he had no strength at all. The fat controllers Burke told him to. You're too expensive, Henry. You had lots of new parts and new pain too, but they've done you no good. If we can't get you better, well, we must get another engine instead of you. Hmm. Sorry. 
This made Henry, his driver than Simon, very sad. The fat controller was waiting as Henry backed onto the train. He'd taken off his hat and coat and put on overalls on the train coats. Climbed onto the footplate and they started off. Henry's a bad steamer, said the fireman, and built his fire, but it doesn't give enough heat. Henry tried very hard, but it was no good. He had not enough steam. When they stopped at the next station, he was very upset. Oh dear, he thought sadly. I shall have to go away. Oh dear. So he stopped behind to let Edward take over. What do you think is wrong, Fireman? asked the fat controller. Well, sir, if you don't mind me telling you, the fact is the coal is wrong. We had a poor lot yesterday, and today it's worse. The other engines can manage. They're big fire boxes. But Henry's is small and can't make the heat. Now, with Welsh Co, he'd be a different engine. Welsh Co, eh? Hmm, it's expensive, said the fat controller. But Henry must have a fair chance. James, I'll go and fetch some. When the Welsh Colonel came, Henry's cool, well excited. Hey, this Welsh Colonel looks good, said the driver. Now we'll show them. He carefully oiled his workings and polished his brass till it shone like gold. His fire was already lit, so the fireman made it carefully. He put large lumps of coal, like a wall, round the outside, then covered the growing part with smaller lumps. Oi! You're spoiling my fire! complained Henry. No, we're not, Henry, said the fireman. Wait and see. We'll have a roaring fire just when we want it.
he was right. Henry was getting his energy back, and he could not do his work fine with that controller came to see. He was not taking the express. How are you, Henry? I feel fine. Have you a good fire driver? Never better, son. Print of steam. Well, no record breaking. I'm pushing too hard. I was beginning to hold it back. Henry was very pleased. He'd never been so well in his life. And he would surprise Thomas at the junction when he might arrive there early. It's a great story, sir, so, but my tail's not better yet. Ah, oh, well, that's not finished. It's a comfort. Any story makes you believe something can manage. You'll tell another story soon. I better get back to work. Percy wants a hand of a story. I have <laughs> Twilight still had to stay in bed after Henry left. This is can make her please, but sometimes she just wishes a tale to be better. But Henry came back quite soon. I needed to visit you again, Troy, not after I had a word with the fat controller and he asked Gordon to take my place. And I'm sorry to see you're upset about missing out with sorting the gorge. Of course I am. I wrote to my teacher about it and she said to me the same thing as Captain Cox said. The Flying Clipper One night, Henry's driver was turning him something interesting they were doing today. The Welsh code they've given you is making your fire burn very well, he said. We're taking the Flying Clipper next day, and when we do it, well, the Fat Controller will let us pull the Express. Great, said Henry. That will be lovely. Lots of ships come to the harbour to deliver some things that go to the shops. There's some cargo of fish to be taken to elsewhere. It was put in a train. They call it the Flying Clipper. With all the fish in the bench, gentlemen, I think we shall call it... Yes, this name will be good. We'll call it the Flying Kipper, eh? Hey? The Flying... I thought you said it was a plane. It was a train, not a plane. Um, trains don't fly, do they? No. 
they don't. Um, that's all the fish murder. Let's give it to Henry. There he is. Henry backed on to the bands, ready to take it on his long trip. Come on, don't be silly, said Henry to the bands. All right, they said, it is better. Clouds of smoke and steam poured from his funnel. In the black sky, as the train began to gather speed, the spine pulled more coal to five groves on the snow ground. Other, 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 As they were passing, things a signal appeared ahead. It was done. The driver thought they could go on, but they didn't go straight ahead. They didn't look at the points. They were switched all the wrong way, not realizing this. They didn't stop till so late they took the line, not taking them where they want to go. A ghost train was waiting in the siding for the fine kipper to pass. The driver and fireman were having some chocolate in the guard's van. The guard pulled out his watch. The kipper's jaw, he said. Who cares, said the fireman. This is good cocoa. Come on, fireman, back to our engine, said the driver, who got up tore his feet. They got out just in time. English driver and fireman had jumped clear before the crash. When morning came, Henry could see he was in a mess. He just crashed in. The fat controller came to see what was going on. Well, Henry, have you anything to say for yourself? The signal was done, sir. Well, it's not your fault. Ice and snow make the accident. I'm sending you to crawl a fine place for sick engines. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. You won't need new coal anymore. Henry liked being at Crawl, but was glad to come home. Many people cheered him, they were pleased to have him back. And I'm sorry to say that some boys were late for school. They were wanting to see Henry doing the work.
on the trains he pulls. They often see him pony the express. He does it so well that Gordon is thinking he's better than him. In other words, he's jealous. But that's another story. Oh, my tail's at the last better. See the tail of Beneath Hopes with Tail Bones. I better get back to the tugs for waiting. Thank you, Henry. I don't feel this up now. Come on then, I'll take you to your friends. Oh, but please take your back. <laughs>